Hey, I'm I'm setting it live. So we just wait for a while. 6.50, we will be live. Right. Is that your mummy and checking up on you? I was just telling them that we're just telling them we're going live, so don't shout at me across the lounge. <laughs> we're already live. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so how's everything there in Sydney? Yeah. Let's All do good. some casual talks before we we kick off. Yeah. It's, uh, it's getting cold. Um, Great. Last few days of autumn, winter on Monday, actually, isn't it? First day of winter on Monday. First day of winter on Monday. Although it's just like a Scottish summer, no? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we are live now. Okay. So we'll start the show with uh, probably about in 10 minutes time, nine to 10 minutes time. So we'll try to invite everyone to join us now. Okay, so everyone join join the party. We will be discussing uh, to... healthy work from home habits. Okay. Healthy work from home. Yeah, healthy. <laughs> healthy work from home habits. Double zero. I got my Mount Franklin. I got the double zero Heineken. <laughs> okay. How's that? That's, that's zero alcohol, right? Zero alcohol, yeah, it's good. It tastes like beer, but without the alcohol. Yeah. 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 Yeah, better not doing that tonight when we're here. I did have a couple of beers out. It's there okay. The, yeah. The, um, we could do one. We could do uh, there's a couple of good podcasts. I listened to Tim Ferriss's podcast where he does it drunk. It's quite funny. Yeah. Gets creative, right? You get quite creative. You fancy do one of those? Yeah, yeah. next one. We'll do it. We'll do a drunk design. <laughs> that would be fun. Might have to do it when my pseudonym pseudonym the chair maven rather than Ergotron. <laughs> I, I, I will I will take a photo so you know how it looks. Are, are you in Facebook now so you can see how? How how we are live? Okay. Yeah. No. I don't usually do face. I'm not a Facebooker no. really very much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is how we look, guys. Oops. Nope. Ah, uh, there. So Beautiful. we are live now. Yeah. <laughs> and you're a handsome chap. Yeah. So we are. Yeah. How you are? Well, you're not so much. Not so much. <laughs> So let's wait for some of our viewers to tune in, okay? Before we start, currently now we have uh, ten viewers on uh, on on our uh, show. Hello, so, so, yeah. We can't we interact have... with them though, right? They they just they just. Uh, I can interact, but uh, it's very difficult if I'm talking. Oh, no, that's I'm, <laughs> I'm interacting. That's okay. So Facebook is on is on my right side, and then. Uh, Oh yeah, I no, I mean they, they can't they can't talk to us now, right? It's just it's just a separate platform. No, no, no. Unless unless uh, what do you call this? I invite them over into the show. I can give them their. Oh, right. You know, I actually I'm planning to do that in one of the shows. You know, sure. uh, to to try to invite us. I'll make it an you know like a free for all. <laughs> You know, I'll do a free for all show where people I will I will just uh, post my. Uh, my uh, meeting ID number to anyone who wanted to join and then they can join in. I will accept them. I mean, you know, probably maybe limit to 10 or 20 people, yep. you know, and then uh, we'll, 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 we'll do like a, a live show of with different people. And then Ian, we're, we're discussing before, right? We wanted to do a debate. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We were talking <laughs> about that while, last year. Last Still. year, yeah, but we wanted to do it we wanted to do it on a, on a conference setting, on a on an event setting, right? But yeah. you know, now I think before we can come up with real events, 
with more than over 100 people, oh, this one will take probably by next year. Yeah. yeah. Even churches now, congregations, and important important uh, gatherings yeah. are, are not really encouraged. So Well, we can still do it over this platform. And, yeah, and, that's why. And then the new topic, you know, do we go back to the office or not? There you go. That's the topic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah correct. There's Just a lot of topics, actually, we can discuss. Yeah, there's plenty, yeah. plenty of stuff to talk about. Yeah, so it's good. I mean, uh, it's good that we can explore a lot more other topics about office. I mean, especially now with the new normal that is that will be coming in. So we have to we have to see and explore what are those things. You see? Yeah. Because now I've been reading. I, I've been reading a few articles from Gensler about how they plan to for for I mean to advise their offices. You know, using technology using uh what do you call this of course all of those wayfinding and uh yep. and probably posters and instead of uh, putting a lot of tapes because tapes might be a nuisance or whatever you know <clears throat> and then of course <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> social distancing and uh timing that means people will some some of the staff will go from six to twelve and some of the staff will go from one to six. Yeah, so those staggering, are, those are, staggering yeah, the time. And right. others are, are others might be working from uh, from uh, what do you call this from home from mm -hmm. Monday to, to Friday, and then others will be working in the office at uh, you know Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Yeah. So there are, there are, there are quite a number of uh, of approach that people are 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 uh, you know exploring. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and it's also not just in the office space. How do you even get before you even approach the office? There's issues like coming up the elevator. <laughs> you know, how many people will you let in the elevator? Obviously, yeah. not. You won't fill it up because then you you breach the social distancing. Then, so yeah, mm -hmm. there's all these issues that are that come up, um, not just in the office space. So it's interesting. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, for for me, I think we just have to live with it. I, I keep on I, I keep on telling myself that if we will live in fear, I think if we will if we will be too overcautious, you see, because I mean a lot of people have it. I mean, like for example, in Singapore, our mortality our mortality rate is uh, I think for only 20, 23, 24 or. People have uh, or have died, but you see the, the effect in the economy. You know, it, mm. it, it, we spend almost a hundred billion dollars worth of our reserves. You know, yeah. just just to save the just to save the other jobs and stuff. But if you look at it, twenty three people dead. You bring down the entire economy. I don't know whether it makes sense. You see, so it's it just depends how many would have died without it, though. Yeah, but uh, I mean, the, the way I see it is, you know, like for example, for the foreign workers, there are about, what, 25,000 for infected foreign workers in Singapore, but no one died, <laughs> amazingly, <laughs> right? Maybe maybe they are they are really strong, you know, their immune systems are really great, you know? Well, good, good medical hospital yeah. there in Singapore, maybe, good treatment. So I, I think we have to start to, to, to at least move forward. Of course, we have to be cautious. You know, yeah. I, have, I, I also have relatives who, who happen to, uh, you know, to pass away because of the coronavirus in London. So, mm -hmm. you know, my, my second cousin. But, uh, you know, initially when, when it happened, of course, you, you, you tend to worry that, uh, you know, it can happen to everyone. But at the end of the day, as, as, as it goes, you know, as time goes by and you hear CNN every every time talking about the virus, the virus, the virus, it's like, can, give me a break, man. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, CNN so, stands for the Crisis News Network. <laughs> crisis <laughs> News Network. <laughs> so we just want yeah. to, it's the only way they get people watching that most, most media is that, you know, it's the um, fear that drives the eyes. Yes, it you know, goes to that idea of fear. So, yep. yeah, happens. But again, it's the underlying causes and different. Those workers are probably relatively fit, and yes. 
a lot of people in Britain aren't fit. Hence Definitely. Why anymore. So yeah. it's, the, it's the, uh, fattest country in Europe, you know, same as Americans, Americans get hit hard because they yeah. are not very fit, high level of diabetes, high level of obesity, mm -hmm. comorbidity, morbidity issues. So that's what's going to drive it. Um, yes. So if you're relatively fit, you know, and don't yeah. have underlying health issues, mm -hmm. yeah, getting past through it. Okay. So well, we're gonna we're gonna start soon. Just give us an, another another minute. It's about six fifty eight Singapore time. So two more minutes, and we will be going live. You know. So we we what we would like to invite all our viewers to come in now. I mean, uh, we are already starting in about uh, two more minutes. We will be we will be talking about uh, healthy work from home habits. Okay, with uh, our guest here live from Sydney. Sydney, right? You're both from Sydney, right? Suburbs yeah, or, yeah, I mean in the city center. Uh, Alan's in the northern no, northern suburbs or North Shore. Mm. I'm in the, in the southwest. Northern beaches, please. Northern, or northern beaches. beaches. Northern, northern beaches. beaches. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm out yeah. in the state. I'm in the swanky place. <laughs> yeah. We're about how many hours? Probably about at this time, an hour away. Maybe peak time, two hours away. Yeah, thereabouts. It's Leaving. nearly about two hours peak hour apart. Uh, yeah. Okay, guys, are you ready? Ready or not? Let's show time. Uh, we're live in five, four, three, two, one. Good evening to the viewers of theofficedesigner.com Todd Talk Live, episode six. Today, we will be talking about healthy work from home habits with our guest live from Sydney, Australia, Mr. Alan Boyd from Ergotron. Okay, he is a workplace ergonomics expert, and we have here our design expert, design manager, Mr. Ian Aquino. Hi, guys. Hello. How's Hello. everything there? Hi, James. How are you going? Good. Very well, thanks. Yep. Excellent. Excellent and sunny, if a wee bit chilly. Sydney. Okay, that's great. Yeah, in Singapore, we are, we are scorching hot in Singapore. So, you know, it's a respite if uh, you guys there are having a very good weather. I envy you. Yeah, yeah, see, we both got our hoodies on, actually. Yeah, branded <laughs> up with the Ergotron logo on there. Yeah, yeah. But Ian had a nice, we had, we met up a couple of weeks ago for a nice walk along the beach. Okay. That's right, yeah. It, it was a beautiful autumn's day. Um, sun was out. Uh, it was actually beach weather for, for, uh, for a uh, day in, uh, in April. Was it April or this month? It was this month, wasn't it? it was this May. Month, yeah. 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 Okay, guys, uh, Alan, can you uh, tell us more about yourself, you know, your experience in, 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 in the workplace, ergonomics, furniture and stuff? You're from yeah. Herman Miller before, right? Are you from? Oh, yeah, Herman Miller, Miller the previous life. With, oh, yeah. Uh, but then in, um, um, originally I'm from Scotland. Okay. <laughs> hopefully you don't need trans. We won't hold that against you. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but in the, a long time ago, I went to New Zealand and uh, immigrated to New Zealand and actually worked in the ergonomic side of the furniture business there. Okay. And interestingly enough, my, I, I swear I met my wife, who's an ergonomist, or was oh. an ergonomist. And so it's ran in her blood for a long time. So I was mm -hmm. involved in, in helping people with injuries in, in New Zealand. And then okay. I got the call, the got call from Heron Miller to come to... Uh, come to Australia. So the right. love of um, some of the Herman Miller's classic designs, especially Rain Charles Eames, which is, as you can see with a nice picture there of an Eames chair, mm -hmm. and my Eames splint on the wall, <laughs> 1942. So, wow. Yeah. Which is a piece of wall. Great part, great image of design there, actually. If you want to talk about design one point, that's a great piece to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was with with him and Mill for about ten years. Did a lot of ergonomic stuff there, working on design about Asia, Singapore. Did a few things there, Thailand. Did a few talks there, 
and then um, left went into the Bentwood chair furniture company called okay. Tonic, classic German design. Worked there mm -hmm. for seven years, and then I thought, yeah, I want to get something a bit more meaty again. Get back into the workplace, okay. and Ergoton came up. So oh, I thought, yeah. Ergonomics, back into that. I like the idea. Yeah. I mean, we use Ergotron quite frequently because they're one of the leading US brands. And, uh, you know, I like the form of their design. So, you know, a lot of times I usually use them for, uh, you know, height adjustable, uh, you know, the, the systems and stuff and uh, monitor holders. You yeah. Know. Yeah. I mean, uh, what Ergotron tries to do, we want to be the what, one of the world leaders in how. Yeah improving how people work, how they learn, how they mm -hmm. play, and how they care for each other. And I think now, which is quite interesting, is that how we work, learn, play, and care for each other is actually coming into the home. Because it used to be everywhere. It used to be in a health case in a hospital. It used to be yeah. in a school. It used mm -hmm. to be in an office. But where is it now? It's actually here. You know? Yeah. So, so, that the home is becoming a lot of these places. So, and the good thing, our product actually goes into all these areas and has okay. a place for the home now, which is coming through. So, yeah, so it's interesting. It's good. And now my role has been expanded to cover the whole of APAC. Okay, two that's months, great. Two months ago, which um, I thought I'd be visiting Singapore. <laughs> and I love visiting Singapore. It's a great place. I love the food. I love visiting Ian when he was there, but he's stuck here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but unfortunately, I'm sort of well, not unfortunately, I'm stuck in Sydney at the moment, and yeah, until we do it. But this is a good way to connect with people, yes, definitely. That's why we opened up this platform, yeah. Great idea, because, you, yeah I mean, with, with, with this, with, with everyone mostly at home, this online, this online uh, Facebook Live, this has been very helpful in terms of informing, educating, and entertaining people. How Don't about you, Ian? Mr. Ian Aquino, yes. our Hi. design manager. Can you tell us some, can, can you tell us more about yourself? Well, actually I've been the design manager only for um, maybe half a year now, uh, working at CBRE. My background is in interior design. I've been an interior design consultant for probably the last 20 years. Wow. And cool. most of most of that time well, was that here. Old? Yeah, that, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> that, that old, yeah. <laughs> um, most of that time was really spent here in Sydney originally, actually. So I'm uh, from first Sydney place. where we first met. Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> although although I studied in Canberra. So I grew up in Canberra. Uh, I went to university there. So when I graduated University of Canberra, moved over to Sydney, bigger city more opportunities and started my uh, design career here in Sydney. Uh, worked for several um, design companies here in, in Sydney uh, until uh, 2015 actually, I decided to go overseas and venture out of Sydney, uh, going over to Shanghai and worked for Hassel in Shanghai for uh, probably a couple of years and then moved to Singapore. So that's how I managed to get to Singapore was work for Hassel in Singapore. And then um, I think my direction changed a little bit. I was more interested in uh, project delivery, uh, coordination okay. and design. And then an opportunity came up uh, at CBRE to be a design manager. Um, so crossed over client side and being more of a design manager under the uh, uh, standard chartered account. So Perfect, yeah, would, very, yeah. Very impressive credentials, brother. You know, <laughs> very you. impressive. That's why that's why we have one workplace ergonomics ex expert and one design manager expert. Okay, so let me throw the first question to Alan. Okay, Alan. Okay, uh, since you're in Ergotron, okay, what uh, I mean, you know, what products do you currently carry that can adapt that you can say can adapt to the to the new normal or you know, to, to what currently we have now. Any thoughts on that? So you're thinking on the office environment? The, Both. In the I mean, it can be in, in, it can be in the work, but, but, you know, yeah, I mean, it can be both because as long as it has a desk and stuff, maybe the mm -hmm. work fits and stuff, you know. Yeah, so, well, 
I think we go back to the idea of why do we need these products? Yeah. And, um, you know, how do we actually perform well in the workplace mm -hmm. and how we do that? I think a lot of now, a confession to make, I love chairs. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've always been a big chair fan. I even do talks on chairs, but chairs are not very good for you, you know, yeah. unfortunately. And I've sold literally tens of thousands of chairs. And I've got, I came to the conclusion that we spend too much money on chairs. Okay. And that perhaps that level of um, complexity and that level of, um, you know, what we put into chairs is maybe a cost that we may not need to have done. And there's other ways of creating a healthy environment, which is things such as sit to stand desking. It's things such as monitor arms. It's, it's actually the movement is the key. It's okay. not sitting. It's not sitting for a long length of time. Um, Alan Hedge, Cornell University, um, talks about this idea of 28-2. We should be sitting for 20 minutes, standing for eight, walking about for two. That's one we're looking at. At Ergotron, we talk about 30-30 switch. So we should be standing for 30, sitting for 30, mixing it up. Now, the only way you can really do that is that now the electric desk, height adjustable desk, electric desk becomes a standard. Who uses them really all the time? Not many people. What we think we should be looking at is the idea of maybe something like a work fit, which is instantaneously. So you can sit, stand up, sit down, and it takes two seconds. Yeah. You have to think about going, I'm going to do a, do a height adjustable desk by going, mm, <laughs> yeah. So here, mm, it would that much time. So yeah. you know, you're not going to do it. You just get stuck. You just sit there. So we got to get a product that goes up instantly, and it's that movement of that squat that helps mm -hmm. move nutrients, blood, oxygen through the body and gets you more alert. Yeah. So Ergotron, we make products that make you move. Yeah. Get the idea? Yep, yep, yeah. Now, so I'm is, have, is it, this is a non-alcoholic beer, by the way. It's double zero. I'm not yeah. drinking. It's okay. Go. <laughs> yeah. So basically, uh, I mean, you know, of course, there's a lot of talk about sedentary lifestyle, right? I mean, you know, those those people that, uh, I mean, you know, this that causes obesity, causes high, uh, high blood pressure, causes diabetes and stuff like that. So Ergotron is, uh, is really... I mean, you know, doing products to avoid this type of sedentary lifestyle. Yeah, right? what Ergotron does, we don't. We come from this idea of, of, of rigor and research, so we're not making products just because. Let's make us hit sit to stand desk. We have a rigor behind our products. We look at the idea of um, why we should be doing this. Uh, we work with Baker Institute in Melbourne, Sanford in the New UK, Exeter in the UK, Loughborough in the UK. We look at the research. It's a research-driven uh, company. Mm -hmm. We were talking earlier on before we came on live about the lot of people who have died with COVID in okay. Singapore and that cost. 3.2 million people die because of a sedentary lifestyle every oh. year. Okay. Yeah, wow. Interesting so, studies. You know, yeah. if you look at that and go, how much effort's been put into sedentary lifestyles and the causation of that, and stopping that, not much. Now, mm -hmm. if you think how much time you sit down during a day, now we're probably yeah. doing more because we're sitting at home. We're that's sitting right. at home, we're not moving. You gotta get up and move. So again, that sort of side of the idea is that we should be um, looking at that health level and movement. And that's just not physical, but that's for mental, mental health and brain health. We've done some really interesting studies on the latency of people working on computers by movement. Okay. So improving latency, meaning accuracy and speed when they're working on computers. So you get a massive big screen and you, you know, dots come out like, and you click on the mouse, sitting down, take the test, stand up, sit down, stand up, ocean moving, 
increases your latency and accuracy. Don't see why gamers haven't figured that one out yet, but that's what happens. <laughs> so what happens when you stand there sitting at home all the time? Yeah. Okay. Working I'm standing right now, actually. I'm standing right now as well. James, are you standing? No, I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. is sitting, sit, there's nothing wrong with sitting. And, um, but sitting for too long is a problem. Yeah. And, and I don't have a chair. Do you know what I've got? I've got one of these. Wow. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're very fit, man. I can see you cycle. <laughs> You know, you do a lot of exercise. How about you, Ian? Anything you can add on to us in, in the design perspective? Yeah, sure, you know? yeah, absolutely. And, and I totally agree with um, with Alan. Um, for me, uh, I think uh, it, I actually have to sit on a ball like this and I am actually uncomfortable sitting on a chair only because uh, about, uh, would have been maybe 13 years ago, I don't know, 14 years ago, unfortunately I had a... Uh, a motorbike accident oh, and sorry. I had a, a fused I've, I've actually got a fused uh, vertebrae so I fractured my vertebrae the L1 vertebrae and three vertebrae are fused currently right in my back mm -hmm. and it tends to pinch the nerve when I sit down for a long period even for um, 20 minutes it starts okay. uh, sort of tingling a bit on my leg so I found that moving is the key you know, not being static, not being, not sitting for too long, not standing for too long, it's moving around. And it's also even the act of going to the toilet or grabbing a coffee every, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And it's just moving is the key really. Um, and, you know, sitting and, and just moving around the space. So working from home as well now, which is great where you can sit on the sofa for a few minutes and maybe go outside for a phone call, get get a breath of fresh air and go into the courtyard. You've got these different areas within your house where you can sort of break out into and not always just sit in front of the in front of your computer. Because right now we've got laptops so we can actually move around, but we're not fixed in one space. But the other thing is other thing is people maybe is not fortunate enough to have a, a proper setup at home. So they mm. may be confined to the dining table perhaps. Um, so that's even more interesting, right? So you, you really have to move around. You can't just sit at the dining table or at the kitchen bench. So you have to make sure you're um, active during those times. Yeah. So keeping up with our with our topic with uh, you know healthy work from home habits. So any any habits you wanted to share, Alan, about uh, you know being healthy while you're at home because you know, for me, I, I gain a bit of weight. Or <laughs> because, oh. yeah, I mean, uh, oh, I yeah, always wanted to. We eat. all have. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to eat. That, that that's one of the bad things you see. Mm. So uh, I, I tend to eat whenever because, of course, in the office you cannot uh, eat at the desk. You know, and then uh, although I can, but I, I don't really encourage myself to have some, some snacks in the desk. You know, but at home you tend to. Every a few every few minutes, when you're thinking, you go to the fridge, you get something, you munch something, and stuff like that. Which now, after I think after the the circuit breaker, I have to go bike bike biking again because I miss biking a lot. You mm. see, that's why now I'm telling myself that enough is enough because I really gained. I think I'm 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 now one of what into one of my most heaviest in my lifetime. So I have to really cut down. <laughs> Well, so you any, any micro, advice? Uh, yeah, you got to do micro movements, and James as well. You got to start thinking about moving at your office. Um, yeah. Get a sit to stand. Stand mm -hmm. more, more calories. Just get you more active. Um, mm -hmm. and as Ian said, when you're going to have a meeting on the phone, go out and walk around. Much more creative. Mm -hmm. A whole Stanford uh, study on the creativity when you're doing a walking meeting rather than a sitting meeting. Yeah. So go out and walk around. I know it's hard in Singapore, it's hot, um, but that will make, make a difference. And as Ian said as well, drink lots of water because that okay. makes you have to go for a pee. So yeah. you have to stand up, go, go to the toilet. So keep on, just get, don't take a sip, take a big drink, 
and mm -hmm. gets you gets you up and moving and um it's good for the other parts of your body as well yeah so that's the key and then but that's the but that's the problem in in, in singapore i mean the, in singapore we usually tend to live in flats right i mean mm -hmm. I, I both you guys are familiar with with how singapore is set up uh in terms of uh i mean living spaces right most most of us we have we are living like for me i'm living in a, in a five room flat okay and then the in uh, about that's about uh 120 square meters which is about 1200 square feet and uh, i have kids my wife my my maid so you know i cannot go go out talking to the phone or in the zoom going around the house and walking so you know like for me Why not? i'm, I'm Why not? On, no, because the kids will, <laughs> will make some noise and then you can see them, you know. The plastic like, accepts and... <laughs> it now, though. Everybody accepts that now. I mean, yeah. not yeah. when you go into your home now is accepted. So yeah. people understand in the, in the you know, pre-COVID yeah. <laughs> days. Yeah, uh -huh. as, as you say, yeah that's why, that's why they call it the new normal, right? Yeah. yeah. It was, it yeah was, the family was, pets in the background. So, yeah, yeah it's all acceptable. But, but I mean, I think, I, I think for the Western, the Western mindset, it's more acceptable. But locally, people tend to still, you know, the way I see it, uh, whoever I'm speaking with, they just don't want it, any noise or what, or they just tend to go into yeah. one place when there's quiet. There, especially in Singapore, I think we're a bit more conservative on this. So, like for me, this one is my my, my personal space. It's an extra bedroom where it's mm. it's my kids' study room. It's our it's our study room. So, I usually just stay here the whole day. You know, sometimes uh, you know because we also don't on the aircon twenty four. Uh, I mean twenty four seven for the whole house. We only have a few house uh, with aircon at the same time because or else. You know our, our electricity bills will be skyrocketing so yeah. we tend to just open at least two to three rooms all at the same time and my mm -hmm. wife is usually in, in 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 the bedroom or in the living room you know if she needs to do some calls bedroom is her is her place and study room is my place you see <laughs> i always start thinking about body weight exercises you can do if you're, if you're at your workstation just sort of start doing some, some so, but <laughs> But Ercotron, do you have anything that has this, uh, you know, like uh, like a treadmill? Because yeah, you can see yeah, we have a, I have a treadmill here, yeah. no. you know. I so I usually I usually show. walk at least twice a week. <laughs> twice, twice a week. Twice a day it should be, James. Yeah, twice, oh. twice a day. <laughs> twice a day. Twice a week, you know. I think we'll Ian. We'll be holding James into that. We'll set him a, re a regime out. So yeah, uh, just now I saw that you're you're, you're looking at your apps and stuff. Yeah, so I do. Yeah, I do the I, like I'm doing the press up challenge at the moment. So let's but, say, um, but because I'm really an, I, I'm more of an outdoors man. I, I want I, I wanted to be to do more outdoor exercises rather than in. Good. So next the next call we should do while we're walking when we come to Singapore, we'll we'll yeah. do a walking talking um, uh, chat. <laughs> I, chat. I like I, I, the two things I like is swimming and biking. So. I usually mostly combine both. After I bike, then I swim. You know, My but uh, competitive sport, James, this... is dragon boating. What was it? So <laughs> I'm a dragon boater. So oh, okay. uh, it's a good sport for you in Singapore. No, in, in, in Singapore, there's there's quite a, a lot of Filipinos <clears throat> doing dragon boat, right? I mean, yeah, yeah there's, we are, there's we lots are of groups very, there. Yeah. Philippines have got a great team. So yeah. I'm president of a local dragon boat club, so mm -hmm. I can't get on the water at the moment, which is sad. But um, but if you have, that's a good sport to get into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Out yeah. The water. And then another another thing about, of course, Singapore is the weather. I mean, if you really just wanted to, I mean, we're quite lucky. We're we're blessed with 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 enough uh, resources. I can say to to. To have air conditioned spaces, right? But others, you know, they tend to they tend tend to not spend too much uh, money on electricity, so they have to, uh, you know, live with a very hot weather. And now, like uh, what I told Alan earlier, the, the the temperature is soaring. It's about 40, 39 degrees, thirty eight degrees, forty degrees, and of course, when you're in the building, you know, 
so close so close together it becomes more hotter is because the vents mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. other air conditioning uh, units of of your neighbors yeah. and stuff like that tend to rise so it all of the yeah. all of those core is producing more heat yeah. going inside so you know yeah. i mean currently now i i saw there's quite a number of people experiencing some heat stroke also you know because it's because of the weather inside their places and stuff so, so I, I think this one is also office is the whole office a healthier place then well i think he's frozen you seen his hot <laughs> again <laughs> You yeah, first exactly. did that. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean people yeah, no, should be back, back, back to the office? Yeah. yeah, definitely. For me, I think there's there's uh, office is really the place to work. You know, yeah. this is this is this yeah. is how this is how I view it. There's, I I mean, the way I see it, we are humans. We 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 need to interact. We need to socialize. We need we need we need to talk to it, it to, to harness each other's creativity, and we are wired this way. There's yeah. no way we can live with this forever. I mean, it's a good, it's a good trial, you know. It's a good thing. Maybe it can work now, but I think most of us will be, will have yeah. mental issues. You yeah, know? I think, I think it's actually a test uh, um, that we can work like this. We can work remotely. We, we, we're testing the technology, so we can still connect. And I think we're we're connecting even more now because we are forced to connect via. Zoom or online or any other um, platforms out there. So I think the the home or where whether you're working remotely, whether it's home or anywhere else outside of the office, it's just an extension of the office of a workplace. Because yeah. effectively, wherever you work is it, it can be anywhere. It can be in the office, depending on what activity you're doing. If you, if you if you need collaboration, yeah, then absolutely. You either go to a meeting room or go to the office or you can still collaborate like this online. Um, I think the idea is being having a flexible sort of lifestyle and whether it's 50% on, at the time in the office or 50% at home, it's really managing that time. And, and we really have proven to ourselves that, yeah, we can work at home. It, it is, it does work. You know, mm -hmm. it's not um, something that uh, in the past where some people or maybe managers think that uh, you need contact, you know, to 100% contact. But we've, again, you've just proven that it can work. So yeah. it, it works at different levels, depending on the kind of um, industry you're in. I also think it's about culture, you know, because the Asian culture is a bit more into, into they want, it's more on time, you know, that means for Asian bosses, you know, I don't know whether it's the Chinese thing or what, but they wanted to see people working. You know, they wanted a nine to five schedule, you know? So, I mean, for the longest time, I think this is the only, this is the only time that this, this culture or this, uh, this way of thinking has been broken. But eventually, you know, for the longest time, we, especially in Singapore, it's a, it's a nine to six, nine to eight, job you know mm. so change and, now come again do you think that will change now in singapore because it's definitely going to change in in australia yeah i mean definitely people will, will 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 be awakened by this i mean if 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 they see that this type of work uh method of working the work from home is uh, is is workable there might there might be a a change in mindset but i'm not really sure because there is still bosses that have an old, I mean the older bosses will still demand this you know and uh, I can already to... see from some of my other colleagues that okay June 2 they are they're they're supposed to report to work even though there's a mandate that uh, you know if people can work from home you know they are encouraging people to work from home but maybe I was thinking that this might be the older the older generation bosses that is requiring their staff to work back in the office, right? Because I think it's a mindset thing of, of, of the older generation that in order for you to be productive, you have to be here at nine to yeah. six, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm not really sure whether this will change, but hopefully it will, because I think most of the, most of the, the younger generations will demand this type of, of working style, 
right? So if you cannot give me this working style, sorry, I'm not gonna work for you. I'm gonna work for someone that will give me this type of working style. Yeah. You see? I suppose the thing will happen is that what happens if with the, the global recession that has to happen and how mm -hmm. many jobs will be there. So people will be really forced to do what they have to do. But <laughs> my human nature is that I'm not to get anything out. Office, you know, wherever that is, and we'll want this office at home mm -hmm. on that choice. So I think there's going to be the office is still going to be there, and the good office will will thrive, and you know we'll keep on going. And then we just have to ensure that when people are working from home, from those enlightened companies who see that people can work at home and work efficiently and better at home that they equip them appropriately to be working from yes. home and working on couches and on <laughs> dining tables and on dining chairs, which mm -hmm. are not appropriate because, I mean, the standard what, height of a dining table um, yeah. is what, 750 mil? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's in Singapore. You know, yeah, around 750. Yeah, correct. 750. Yeah. So what's the standard desk height should be? Around 700, 720. Yeah, yeah so it's about, it's, it's about four inches taller. So when you say, what was the 720 height set for? How was that set? What was that set for? It was set for a German. Some oh. didn't. 99 percentile of Germans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> set, set for the taller person. Sort of mm -hmm. thing. So if you actually, um, if you sat, sit down, thighs horizontal, Take a big deep breath, relax, take your hands into your lap, then move your elbows up. And if you're at 720, unless you're six foot one, um, you're doing this. Mm -hmm. So especially with the Asian stature and Scottish, we're not that tall, really. Um, so if I look at my desk, I, I'm about 670, I think it is, last time I, I looked at it. Mm -hmm. And that gives me a king height because the desk height was set at that height for mainly computer and paper-based tasks. Yeah. How much paper-based tasks do we do? Not a lot. Mm -hmm. Ninety percent would be a computer, and it's still even the the, uh, the new Australian standard came up, and it was once it said six ten to seven forty is the standard for a fixed desk. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. So high, high, seven foot up to dining table height is a standard, but it was said that you should really look at height adjustable desks. Yeah, so, and, and the other, the other thing with that as well, knowing to have the right height, a little bit of knowledge and education, what is the correct height, right? Because yeah. to the lay person, they may adjust their desk, and it may not be conducive to what they're doing. It might it might be a little bit too low, it might be a little bit, little bit too high. So it's yeah. also a bit of education, I guess, right? Uh, I learned to to teach people what is the right height. Yeah, to, totally. To I think the idea of um, well, adjustability is the key. You mm. know, just to have that some that movement in some way uh, is is the key. Uh, it's not ergonomics. I was told is not an exact science because everybody's different. The anthropometrics, the measurements of the human body, two people can be the same height, but the popular full height that the could be different, the length of the arm could be different. Everything mm. could, you know, pieces, parts of your body can be different lengths, in more ways than one. But the <laughs> um, but everybody's different. So That's you have right. to have adjustability in the desk and the monitor and to, to let people fit into that workplace. And when they do a fit out, what annoys me about fit outs at times is what happens after. Where's the post occupancy evaluation? Mm, uh, yeah. Where's that tuning? Because usually they can get to a certain level, and then you've got to tune it for that individual. And the difference can, can be, it can make is, is amazing. So we got to look at that sort of thing. And you know, I'm not an ergonomist, but again, an, an, a, a true ergonomist on board is always a good idea. I don't know what that, there's 80 in, in Australia. Uh, I don't Do know you call them physiologists, physiologists or what? I mean, physiologists, not fishing. 
Fishy. Nope. <laughs> I think it's P H Y, physiologist. <laughs> it could be a, a physiotherapist. Or a oh, sorry. Physiotherapist. physiotherapist. Sorry. My wife is an occupational therapist with a postgrad in ergonomics, that sort of thing. So you can get oh. allied, allied health people, which mm -hmm. are health, health people who um, have specific qualifications in ergonomics. Mm -hmm. They can do postgrad or whatever, or they can do that. So I know there's a few in in, in Singapore, uh -huh. so um, that is a good one to get on board in a design team looking at a bigger picture, the whole thing when you're doing a fit out. Um, okay. Not for new guys, uh, especially me, are good at that sort of thing. But um, you know, you want an ergonomist on board if you can. Yeah. So I mean, for for the people working from home, if they don't have any setup, for example, they don't, they have yep. zero setup. Okay, like uh, I, I, I read about Google, okay? Google is giving at least $1,000 for mm. office expense. They will reimburse $1,000 USD to the employee yeah. for, I mean, you know, to do a office setup, right? Yeah. We'll so if, if you're given $1,000 to do an office setup, okay? Yeah. What, think, what yeah. are you gonna install in your home from-, from yeah, thousand dollars. That's the budget. Thousand dollars. Yeah. Ian can talk for a bit. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, see. yeah. Well, firstly, get a ball. Yeah. There you okay. go. Get, How much is it? Is. Uh, less than fifty dollars. Okay. <laughs> and then, actually, if you don't have, if you don't even have a a, a proper workstation, a desk, you can mm -hmm. get something that I already have, which is a. Uh, it's called a Ergotron WorkFit. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> which is a, it's just a manual adjust, uh, which you can sit on top of any desk. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it can be a dining table uh, or any sort of desktop. And you can adjust it to suit your height and whenever you sit down as well. But that's probably the simplest way. And then you, you'll have change after that, after that thousand bucks. So okay. go out and, you can well, buy other things. But you still have a chair. You, <laughs> you, 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 you still need to have a chair, right? Well, so a okay, chair, yeah. work yeah. fit, ball, what else? <laughs> I know you, you, you're, you, you're using the, the, the ball as your chair. As your you chair, know? yeah. Okay, that's me. I mean, I'm maybe quite unique, but I think a lot more people should consider that way of working. So but yeah, there is also a stool that, that rocks, right? I mean, you know, yeah, all of those rocking stools, right? Yeah, yeah. Good little perching stool is good as well. Does Ergotron have these rocking stools? Do you have? Do you have? No, do you have? no they okay. should have, but they don't. I mean, I think uh, going back to that, the the thousand tons from Google is is a great initiative. I think mm -hmm. the problem is that giving with like no advice. I don't know if it is. They may have given the advice. There may be some protocols in place. I don't know, but I would hope so because it's quite easy. Could somebody go out and buy a secondhand lazy boy or something? You know, <laughs> that's right you know, uh, or just sit there and the idea that if they haven't been educated and not given direction because I remember years ago when the guy blew my mind this and I can't remember who, who it was but I was at an ergonomics conference and he said the problem is that the problem is comfort I said oh it's a good thing isn't it he said no that's the problem no what do you mean he said people you get too comfortable in sitting down don't move yeah you know, Oh, okay. And then I look back and I think, hmm, I had a point, you know, maybe. And it's like life, you know, you say to James, are you comfortable with your, if you get too comfortable with your relationship with your wife, you're in mm -hmm. trouble. You get too comfortable in your job, you're in trouble, you know. So you got to get a, bit, a slight bit of discomfort to, to make you move forward. And moving forward is, is the key in everything. So I think we just have to make sure that people buy the, the correct equipment. Um, it'd be very easy for anybody to go, let's go and get a, I do love the Heaven and Miller chairs, but very, let's go and get an Aeron. Let's go and get, you know, or let's go and get, you know, another chair. Um, Let me do. guys share a screen. I'll share a screen of how the, the work fit looks like. I think, uh, wait, uh, let me see whether, there. Okay, let me share the screen. So this is how the work the work fit TL sit stand 
desk solution looks like. So, yeah, you still have change. It's only eight hundred and eighteen Singapore dollars. It's a half price. Yeah, this is this is from <laughs> Office and Others. Okay, an right. online shop in Singapore. Should okay. Get it. Yep. Yeah. So in US dollars, probably this one will only be six hundred. Yeah, but it's good. I mean, you see, you can you can put it on top of tables and stuff, right? Yeah. So, but again, going back to that, the idea is movement is the key, and make it easy. Mm -hmm. Now, so yeah, you can do that. You look at monitors. You put a monitor arm on a standard desk. You could you could make that work. There's only that probably two three hundred dollars. Um, you got to sit in something, and you want to have a chair with some height some height adjustability on it. Um, okay. But if you were um, if you didn't have that budget, you know, what do you do? So not everybody's going to have a thousand bucks to play with. Um, okay. You know, there's a little one there you can do, work fit. Again, all these things are making you move. Now, if you don't yeah. have something, if you're still on a, um, on a standard desk, say, start to use books and mm -hmm. reams of photocopying paper. Okay. And Lift your monitor up by that, not a monitor arm. Lift your chair up. Um, put a, even again, used to be the yellow pages, but put reams of photocopy paper underneath your foot so it lifts you up. So at least you get to that better posture. And then move. It could be that you go onto your dining table, work for a while, and then move and go onto the, the kitchen bench and work for a while. You don't That's have- That's right. Yeah, it's problem. a bit of variety really, isn't it, Alan? I mean. Again, you don't need to spend an arm and a leg to, to get yeah. the best chair and the best table out there. I yeah. think the key thing is, as Alan has mentioned, is to move around. Uh, whether yeah. you're sitting on the sofa or the dining table, the yeah. thing is don't sit there for too long. Move around, yeah. stand up and move. That, I think that's the key thing. Jump yeah. around. Around. Jump around. Yeah, but what, for those who have a height adjustable table already, how about those monitor monitor brackets? Do you think this also yeah. helps? Totally, because you're you actually when you sit at a desk and stand at a desk, you actually have a it's a different viewing plan, angle. So once yeah. you sit, it's not the same when you stand up actually. So you yeah. want to move the monitor as well. Okay. So outside, so you and then that's playing with it and playing with how you do it. And that, as what we said, fine tuning your environment and then moving. Now, once okay. you get all that thing set up, no matter what, you still want to move, and then you've got to do the exercises. So I'll show you an exercise that'd be good for you when you're if you're sitting for too long. Okay. So if you're sitting, James, you are all day on the computer. Yeah. Uh, you can get this sort of double cross syndrome, but then the upper cross syndrome is that we end up doing that all the time, and we end up having that sort of hunched shoulder posture. So what we want to do every so often is put the hands behind your neck and open it up and lean back and hold that for about 10 seconds. If you do that for 10 seconds, you really start to, at this point, get oxygen into your brain and opens up your chest and oh, helps, okay. helps blood go through and oxygen go through into your brain that wakes you up, especially at nearly 10 o'clock past my bedtime in Sydney. That's right, same with me. We've been up for at least 10 <laughs> yeah. hours, right? Well, do well, that a few times and that exercise keeps on going, opens up your chest and keeps you going, keeps you open like that. So one of these exercises really keep, opens up your chest and stops you getting to that, um, you know, that syndrome of coming, coming down and pulling up your head. So basically, it's, I mean, you know, of course, the, <clears throat> the equipments help, right? I mean, your, your, the, the, the furniture is help, but also, it also, uh, I mean, you know, you can also practice it by yourself. I mean, you know, like all of those, all of yep. those breathing like and uh, yep. posture, you know. Yeah, yeah. posture. I think the, the best thing that ever was told, and it's the thing that all sort of health professionals always say, is... Your best posture is your next posture. Yeah. So this for this type of uh, you know like uh, to share our to to share to our viewers how does all of this type of monitor really help? I mean this monitor arm. You know I, how how does it I, help? 
Can yeah. I make a quick comment on this one? I guess with, with the monitor arm, it's getting the monitor off the desk and therefore clearing your desk for other things uh, like your equipment, your books and other equipment. That's one way. And then obviously the adjustability, right, Alan? I mean, that's when you can adjust it. But really it's, it's clearing that desk space, whether it's at home or in the office. It's allowing yep. for more, yep. um, you know, yeah, you can do as well. Also, what it can do as well when you're you're down, you're sitting, say, if you're at a standard desk and you go into sort of set, slightly reclined posture, which is quite good, you can move it forward. And then mm -hmm. if you come up, you can push it back again. So again, movement, 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 making things okay. easy to move is the key. One interesting thing that I never thought of, but I came across it um, from someone else, um, was the idea that and here's a thing going back into post COVID and going back to the office is that someone had said to me that the death of uh, the hot desk. Okay. And I went, okay, but maybe not. If you think of a hot desk, you have seen some disgusting assigned desks, the amount of dust and crap and old coffee table, old coffee cups, keep cups filled with mold, etc. Whereas if you had a, hot desk environment with a monitor arm and a clean desk policy after a person uses that and if you've got a good which you, everybody will have a really good cleaning regime coming back into the office therefore a hot desk could be a good place to be because it'll be designated there's enough technology there to give that desk a really good clean lift up the keyboard um, you'll have a, the monitor underneath it the monitor is do with a monitor arm it can be moved out the way it can be wiped down can be disinfected sterilized whatever they're going to do these days to it hit it with a flamethrower and then <laughs> clean it all down and it's a better chance of it being a um, safer environment than a desk that has a lot of crap on it really and will yeah. be clean so as part of a whole cleaning regime um, a hot desk would be really good, as long as it's got monitor arm and desk can be cleaned off and wiped down. Okay. So that's another benefit of a monitor arm, rather than the standard ergonomic movement ideas of it. Okay. Yeah. So how about co-working spaces now? I mean, let, let, let's talk about co-working spaces. This is another hot topic in, in LinkedIn. I mean, whether it will survive or it will, you know, dissipate slowly you know because okay what happens is co-working space bring us closer together people we don't know we, we bring it together it's about the society or social interaction right but COVID-19 social distancing they tend to push people apart away you know so now okay I have one office which is in a in a co-working space in uh, you know in Raffles Place. So now I'm not really sure how people will respond for me. I'll be as per normal, but other people might think that they'll, they'll, they don't know who's going to be going in and out of the office. You know, whether this guy has been infected before, whether this guy is symptomatic or what, or this guy is a carrier. So how, how, how do you think this will play out moving forward for the co-working spaces? Ian? Ian? <laughs> Yeah, it definitely an interesting topic, um, even before COVID-19, the direction in which co-working spaces will go. I mean, yeah, it's a hard one. I still think there is a, you know, there is a market for it. There's still going to be new companies popping up and they'll still need spaces. You know, they won't be spending tons of money for, for a, you know, renting a, a space in a building. And I think... Mm -hmm. It will still be that, but I think it's more about the how that it's managed, how that space is managed. You know, different co-working companies have different ways of managing that. And it's interesting in Singapore when I was still there earlier this year, um, how quickly they uh, rolled out all the thermal cameras in in base buildings. You know, at, at the entry level concierge, um, and how they monitored people that were coming in and out. So if your co-working space is within one of those buildings in Singapore, I think it's it's managed a lot better than those that don't have that system in place. Yeah. And I think 
here in Australia, I, I don't believe we we rolled out thermal cameras in all buildings, yeah. right? I mean, it's not something oh, yeah. that that we we did. So I just a few at the moment. Yeah, yeah. and again, it, it depends on the management of the building. So that's basically the answer. I think at the end of the day, co-working spaces. I think they'll they still definitely be market a market out there. It's how those places are managed uh, moving forward. I think it'll depend on different countries and different companies' strategies. I think there's been that, as Ian said previously, I think companies were looking at their space and looking at flex space. So you'd have your um, main office, the cultural capital of your, co of your company, uh, and then company would want to flex. I think we could see a lot of people who are working now from home who were maybe in co-working going, actually, I could probably do this and save myself money. I'm a startup, you know, I can do that. Other companies will go, I don't want my staff to go into somewhere, but a co-working space would be good for a company to have it themselves and have it on even a month to month or quarterly yeah. um, lease. So you would take a whole area of a co-working space and make that yours mm. for a certain amount of time. Just as flex space to see what's going to happen. And it could be certain, it could be we work if they're still alive by that time. <laughs> did, you see that? did you hear that podcast on WeWork? I saw really something. Podcast. Listen to that podcast, it's hilarious. Anyway, um, so that will be the idea of um, co-working spaces, I think, in the future will be flex spaces for big companies. And then you'll have your cultural capital, the building of what they... So an office could be, for a large company, could be like um, um, Apple have their Apple shop. You know, you have that total mm. idea of Apple shop and that's where your brand, your culture is. But you could have other spaces about, not in maybe Singapore, but I, I think um, in other countries you'll see more of the hub and spoke happen where you'll have the, the large office, but you'll have now um, satellite offices which may be co-working spaces, but owned or leased by companies. I was on a, uh, a call with Medibank, a large company in, in Australia, and they were talking about, well, they just realized that when the facility chap was on a train coming from two hours outside Melbourne, that there's about 40 or 50 people on that train. They said, why don't we just have a, a, a hub closer to where everybody's living rather than having to come in all the time now because they're all doing that. So keep these spaces. So we'll have a hub and spoke. So some of these hub areas could be in co-working spaces and leased on a quarterly basis to see what happens and flex and move and Corsetina their space when needed. But and, I I, think and I think that, that's right. Yeah, and I agree. And I think it just levels it all out. Like you've got options now. You have an office space, you've got a co-working space, or you can work from home, or yeah. you can work at a cafe. So the, the options have basically opened up to, to everyone, to staff, to, to employees, and, and where they can work. There are options on how to work. Um, right now, you know, working from internationally from another country, we're still connecting. Um, and we're not, you know, slowing down anything. We're, we're still managing to move forward. So it actually, again, has proven that regardless of where you are, uh, things still keep moving. So okay, yeah. we have we have uh, at least five more minutes to talk about our last topic. Okay, because you know, in the new normal, they 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 tend to put new new things in the table, like they wanted to put protective shields. They wanted to put a lot of disinfecting devices and stuff like that, you know. So how do you see this, uh, I mean, affect? Will it affect or will, will it not affect uh, workplace ergonomics and stuff like that? You know, because it may replace it because people's mindset is not really about maybe their health, but they're, they're worried more about the virus. I mean, you know, the air and stuff like that. And with a lot more, uh, with a lot more bar barriers, because some tables are 1.2 by 700, others are 1.5 by 700, and then if you intend to put a lot of plexiglass acrylic uh, 
barriers or uh, protective shields, then you might not really have enough space to put all your work fit or, or, or I mean, you know, to put bigger monitors mm -hmm. with, with uh, monitor arms and stuff like that. So do you think this will affect or or no? I mean, you know, it will just uh, really I think it's I think it's a false sense of security, knowing that there's a barrier there, thinking, yeah, okay, yeah, there's a barrier. No. <laughs> I'm protected. It's like the mask issue, right? Um, people wear masks because they think they're protected, they're hundred yeah. percent protected, but you know, we're told that it's not foolproof. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you still have to maintain that distance. So I feel if you if you do build up those barriers, we're almost going back to the 80s where, you know, all the old workstations are two meters high or little cubicles. So going kind of going backwards. I mean, we've already spoken about it. If people are going back to the office, you have, say, 50% of people come back and you just alternate the workstation. You still have the same space. You don't even have to reduce the space. You just have uh, a percentage of the people come back and you have gaps between workstations. Yes, You've got that separation. You don't need to add all these things, barriers. Um, and, and you just, the thing is, it's it's almost like a change management, right? You're moving back to a space, but using it in a different way. So I think that's that, that's one of the options and the easiest and quickest. Alan, any, any comment on that? Yeah, I, I agree with Ian, what he said. Um, I think that um, there'll be a lot of knee-jerk reactions yeah. to them mm. and a lot of waste of materials and a lot of environmental degradation because they're yeah. just buying stuff that's going to be useless and um, you know sound issues. I think long-term when we start designing furniture, maybe we should be, I think we've got to be ready for hyper-hygiene and cleaning surfaces, med medical-grade surfaces when in offices because we want to be cleaning a lot more. And I think, you know, this has given a lot of people a bit of a scare. So I think um, hyper hygiene in the office. And I think this idea of actually um, to help people is the idea that should be, there should be people going around the office all the time cleaning. Yeah. You know, should not I wrote the blog. Do it straight away, you know, and yeah. when people move and clean it, clean it. And the yeah. smell, the smell of, of disinfectant will be in our noses for. <laughs> we'll have other side effects as well, won't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Disinfect. We're not, not. I'm not meaning injecting it or anything like that. But, I wrote um, a blog. I wrote a blog about this, and then uh, I mean, you know, in LinkedIn, I got about two, three thousand uh, views and uh, a few comments. Okay. But basically, the way I see the comments are coming from are from those system furniture people who are definitely into this. You know, their 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 selling point is they call it the psychology of safety. That yeah. means with more barriers there, people will feel safe. Yeah, for me, it's a it's a pro. It's a yeah. pro for the COVID. I mean, safety is there. Yeah, but like what I say, it's it's not a sustainable solution. It's yeah. like what like like what Alan say, you know, it will just be rubbish afterwards, you know. You install it and then later on the sound, the echo, and then another thing is the safety, you see, because this might have sharp edges, you know, and then plexiglass is transparent. So you might be you might be you you thought that it's it's totally transparent, but then you move and then you will hit that particular piece. Uh, you might be able to hurt yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I think it'll be well, it well-rounded edges. I just think it's probably a, a, a bit of a knee-jerk reaction to something at the moment. And yeah. but then some of the materials, you know, look at, you, again, into that more healthcare medical type materials, which are some nice materials, but which mm. are more antimicrobial, easy cleaned, uh, could be used in the future. That's longer term. But we'll still, we, I'm sure we're going to see lots of plexiglass in the offices. Definitely, definitely. Uh, but there's other ways to do it. And I'm sure yeah. that more intelligent people than, than me, like Ian, um, who will figure this one out. Yeah, and, and with, with plexiglass, I guess it depends on if it's a teller where people are talking and sure, that's a good way to, to screen that, you know, the, the, maybe there's some, um, yes, when people talk, there's a bit aerosol. of aerosol. Either, yeah. yeah, aerosol. Yeah. But when you're in a workstation, you're not talking to someone, you may be on the phone, sure, but there are areas where it's more applicable than, than others, you know, depending where yeah. it is, it's activity you do. 
for me, my take on this is definitely besides uh, besides the physical, the surfaces and stuff, there's also an element of indoor air quality. Because now they say that six feet is not enough. You know, they've been, they've been, uh, there's, they need 12 feet. Because besides aerosol, once it goes out, it also spreads out, you know, yeah. it flows in the air. Mm -hmm. So even though you got barriers, it has the tendency to stick in the barriers and stuff, or it can, it can linger for a few feet, you know. Yes. So they Absolutely. have to also address indoor air quality. You know, there's, there's quite a number of, of yeah. purifiers there in the market that can really help on this in duct, uh, in duct systems mm -hmm. that can, can clean the air and stuff. So these are actually the way I see it is there are key components that will help. It's not only it's not only one component that will really yeah. make everything. You know, it's a combination of different different uh, components: air, surface disinfection. You know, like like what Alan say, hygiene, the smell of alcohol will will make people feel safe and stuff. You see. So all of this will play a part. I mean, it, it's yeah. not really a one-off solution. There will be a combination of solutions. So that's why that, that leads me to the last question that I was asking whether, well, before ergonomics is, is, is front and center, you know, because of sedentary lifestyle in the Philippines, they even have loss for, you know, for BPO or uh, I mean, all of those in the call center that never stand up, you know, so they have a five minute break every hour. It's in the law. So now, it, I mean, previously, er, uh, workplace ergonomics is front and center. But now I think workplace hygiene will be front and center. Yeah. Okay? Well, it's all about wellness, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's about health and wellness. It, 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 it's together. I mean, you know. Yeah. But, uh, of course, the hygiene in terms of not, not only one specific uh, uh, item, but it's just about but not getting that coronavirus thing. Well, I think right. designers such as Ian is, uh, you know, I've always been the idea that great design is 99% invisible. Yeah. It's up to the designers to design in all these solutions so people mm -hmm. are not aware of it. Yep. And it will just yeah. happen elegantly and effortlessly. Yeah. yeah. And there's also everyone's own responsibility, you know. I mean, if you're if you're sick, don't go to work, mm -hmm. you know, stay home. Um, and in the past, you know, how people come in, they're coughing, they're sneezing. They, I guess um, they want to look good and keep working, but it's just being negative, and you're just spreading the your your, your cough, your your um, flu. Again, around. it's a yeah. culture thing. <laughs> it's an yeah. Asian yeah. thing, you know. Asians yeah. they. No matter what, that's why they, because some of the bosses, they wanted to see you in the office, mm. right? You know, Maybe not now. Yeah, well, now it's a matter but of... That's why I say hopefully of, it will change. Death, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's why even though, and then of course they wanted to count their MC, so even though they're not feeling well, they go in. But of course we know that it's not about the person who is sick. It's about the person that, the other people that will get the sickness of that particular person. You see? For me, in my staff, that is what I, I always tell them. You know, you don't go to work not because, I mean, of course you're sick, but you also have to protect your colleagues, right? Yeah. You know, until you're not 100% well, don't go to the office. It's because we also won't accept you in the office. I mean, this is, I mean, as, 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 as Filipinos also, we have this certain type of mindset, a bit of Western mindset, you know. But some, some Asian, really Chinese Asian... <laughs> You know, if you if you really want to work, if you really want to work and you're sick, just work from home and now and yeah on, now there's a Zoom. solution now this Zoom is it and then link yeah. to your boss and show him your work. Yes. I think <laughs> yeah. now I think now 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 with, with with the onset of all of these technologies, cloud technologies, video conferencing technologies, I think definitely we have to really look into work from home and uh, and really it's an people. Option. Yeah. yeah, definitely an option. I mean, moving yeah. forward, once once we're all clear or out of this, it's it's another place to work that that is normally accepted. You know, it's become like you said the new norm. So, yeah, just getting that again adds to the variety, diversity of where where you can work. Yeah. Uh, 
Thanks for the movement again. <laughs> yeah. So guys, I don't want it to hold you up. It's already 10 uh, p.m. in Sydney. So let's just wrap it up. You know, uh, just just a few. It's Friday uh, night. It's okay. Yeah, just yeah, have a drink. Just final word. <laughs> just final the word, guys. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> anyway, uh, Alan is, has been taking his Heineken. <laughs> so yeah, my Heineken okay. double zero. No alcohol. <laughs> So, so, any final words, guys? Ian? Uh, yeah, can't wait viewers. to get back. Can't wait yeah. to get back to Singapore and um, and work over there. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, um, I'm looking forward to go back to Singapore at some time as well. Maybe we'll do a live talk as well. Yeah, no, yeah we are we, really we planning might, that, right? I mean, yeah, we might end yeah. up going back at the same time, Alan. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> have a bit of fun and usually I do a couple of talks where I have prizes and make a bit of a quiz so I'll make it like a game show a design game show would be fun yeah. um, so uh, yeah but I think as um, Hosier says uh, move me baby yeah. so <laughs> you know, movement is the key yeah movement is the key so good night everyone so good on night. behalf of theofficedesigner.com uh, for, uh, watch us next week for our topic will be the paper proposal movement. This is Ooh. a very good topic. I mean, paper proposal because we, we wanted to talk about all of those clients that are asking you to do work for a pitch but doesn't really want it to pay, right? Oh, so okay. I will have a few okay. guests, a panel, <laughs> and then uh, like what I say, I wanted to do a free for all Maybe this one is, is one good topic to be a free for all. Bring in 20 over people and let them speak their minds out. Right? <laughs> okay, good night, guys. And thank you for all our affiliate members, right? Our, our uh, you know, the office designer sponsors, Foyer, Digify, Exto Asia, Office and Others, ISP Acoustics, IA Racking, Avid Builders, Luminaire, and Ergotron. You know, for officeandothers.com, this is James. Good night, Ian. Good night, Alan. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good okay, one. we're signing off. Cheers. Good night, guys. Bye. Thanks Bye. for being our guest. Bye. Bye.